going over the S color seal, which we have a patent pending on this product. <coughs> Sealing against MIC. MIC stands for microbial induced corrosion. Statistics and research show that internal corrosion is the leading cause of pipeline failures, causing an accident, cause target failure and destruction. I'm going to give you my opinion why internal corrosion is the leading cause of pipeline failure. In my opinion, any data that we gather, if we don't put it together, it's only a snapshot in time. So I'm taking your picture and put it, post it on Facebook. It's only a snapshot in time. What I mean by that, we have inline tool runs that are ran on regular lines five, five times or uh, every fifth year. That, that is only good for that one time you ran it. It don't represent. And if, and if it shows a failure, you cut it out, and, and at that given point, you can assess your pipeline integrity. But if it's longer than 20 feet, 20 miles, 500 miles, it don't represent the entirety of the, of the pipeline. If you have weight loss coupons, they're only a snapshot in time. If you have monitor equipment, it's only a snapshot in time. If you flip it on the cathodic side, on the outside of the line, you have yearly uh, cathodic service you can do on regular lines, yearly. You have rectifier service that you read six times a year. And if that don't work, you have CIS, you can monitor between testing and testing to see if you have criteria on your pipeline up to par. And you can, if you find a low reading, your criteria goes below a certain criteria, whatever you're using. Well, you can allocate money, dig up the blind, access it, mitigate the problem, and you don't have to stop product flow. On the internal, if you want to look at the inside line, you have to stop product flow or divert your product. So that's my opinion why internal corrosion is a leading cause. A pipeline failure. Moisture, talking about moisture. Moisture is the leading, one of the leading reasons for most corrosion failures. It mainly meets with salts and chlorides creating corrosion, uh, corrosion cells. Got an example here down, down here at the bottom. This example here, these tanker trucks are what, what I'm depicting as bad oil. Bad oil to me, to me means these tankers have water mixed with oil. That's bad oil, this is what it usually means. So I got a little scenario here. On a 45 mile heading screw line operating at 20,000 barrels per day, operating at 1% BS and W, bottom sediment water, you could literally be introducing 200 barrels of water into your pipeline system, one, two. And if your pipeline system is less than turbulent, it's not gonna keep it suspended. I got a bottle here filled with marble oil and uh, water. Water drops to the bottom, mixes with these salts and chlorides. But if it's turbulent, but give it a little bit, it won't take much to separate and drop off to the lowest point and create corrosion cells. There we go. Mick, straight out of NACE. Mick represents between 20 to 50 percent of all damage caused by corrosion. It's estimated to be from half a billion to $1.5 trillion per year. And why do we have a leaflet with water droplets if we start talking about pipelines? Well, these three water droplets that we see here, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the very minute water droplets that you see. It's all a microbe needs to mix with these solids, salts, compounds, creating corrosion cells. Like the very tip of your pen or pencil, that's all a microbe needs. Why do you have an ocean view? Well, to that little water droplet and moisture we've been talking about, it's like an ocean of water to its microbes. The only way you can see its microbes is Microbes is under magnification, under a microscope. 